Hey guys, before you get started with today's video, do me a favor and click this video that's gonna pop out right here if you guys wanna win some amazing PC hardware that I'm giving out as a celebration for the 1 million subscribers that I'm about to pass. So with that out of the way, make sure you guys are subscribed and following on Twitter and you get two entries into winning that. Hey, I'm trying to shoot a video here. My bad. You guys have a chance of winning some amazing stuff, so go do it. Do it now. What's up guys, Jace 2 cents here coming at you with another Ryzen video. Who would have guessed? This was gonna be a little bit more of a vloggy format because I've, well, I'm, I'm alone today. Nick won't be here till tomorrow. So we're going to play around with overclocking on Ryzen. There's been a couple of BIOS updates to the Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard. Uh, there's been also some microcode updates as well as some more stability uh, improvements when it comes to memory. All things I was struggling with when I first put this system together. So I figured this is kind of a neat video where we're kind of three weeks forward from the launch and let's see how much has actually changed in the past three weeks. Cooler Master's Master Key Pro series of keyboards offer 16.7 million color RGB, genuine cherry switches, a variety of sizes as well as surface mounted controls allowing full customization without the need for standalone software. Learn more by following the link down below. I've also got this right here I'm gonna be trying out with this. This is the new G-Skill Flare X memory. As you can see, it says designed for AMD Ryzen platforms. What's funny is right under that, it says compatible with Ryzen. If you ask me, if this was designed for Ryzen, this should say compatible with Intel? I don't know. This actually reminds me a lot of the first DDR4 memory from G-Skill, which was the Ripjaws 4. Um, the heat spreader looks a lot like it. Again, more of this whole AMD compatible DDR4 um, I would hope so, since it's uh, designed specifically for it, at least according to the package. Now the question begs to be asked, could I have made it any harder on myself to get this memory out of here with that cross pipe? I mean, it's doable. It's just, look at that, ooh, who's cringing right now? Oh, cringy, cringy, cringe. I do feel like the Corsair Vengeance LPX, though, is much more aesthetically pleasing than the Flare X, but, uh, Clearly just G-Skill went with more than the bare minimum amount of flair. Thumbs up if you guys know that movie reference. Now little disclaimer, everything that you guys are about to see is exclusive to the ASUS Crosshair 6 Hero, my 1800X, although it should apply also to 1700 and up, and then obviously the G-Skill memory. But of course, before doing any sort of overclocking attempts, make sure you have adequate cooling and make sure you have all the latest BIOS and such installed on your, uh, your system. So with that said, I obviously have all the latest BIOS and microcode and everything installed on this system. So let's start overclocking. And the only reason I even have the AMD Ryzen Master software on here is specifically to monitor temperatures. We are all stock right now. We need a baseline to at least compare where we kind of started from. Uh, but I don't like this software. AMD software has always been super buggy. I mean, look, even just trying to move the window around, it keeps like sticking. Why? Is it that sticky? Literally, like it gets stuck. Watch this. See, it oh, stuck again. So yeah, I'm just using it to monitor temperatures because it's really the only accurate way. But look at that, we're already idling in the mid 40s uh, on water. Yeah, that's, that's water in there. Well, there's other things too, but you get the idea. Now I'm also gonna be using Cinebench to just kind of compare our results. Keep in mind though that Cinebench by itself is not a very good way of determining the stability of your system. It is nothing more than a benchmark number to give you comparative results. You need to check it with whatever your daily workflows are, the programs you use, games and all that sort of stuff to determine its overall reliability. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and do our baseline test. I wanna see the temperatures too here. On water, stock bolts and everything, it still shoots up to 61.5 C. Oh, it's a warm chip. I'm gonna give it that. It is, it is a warm chip. AMD has stayed true to form on that one. Okay, the results are in, and we ran a 1560 on our very first base run. It's not too bad, and that was at 3.7 gigahertz uh, on all cores. So that's the factory settings. That's what it did all by itself. SMT is on, all that crap. So let's go ahead and start overclocking. Something I want you to keep in mind though as we move forward is when I built this system, the fastest I could achieve was 4.0 at 2667 memory. I was not able to achieve any faster memory speeds even by relaxing the timings if I was anywhere near 4.0 gigahertz. So I'm gonna take any speeds faster than that today as an obvious uh, improvement and an optimization of BIOS 
Maybe the RAM uh, compatibility is helping here. I don't know exactly what they changed. They don't even say on the package what they changed. It just says optimized for Ryzen, whatever that means. So maybe that's gonna help moving forward. But I'm kind of curious to see how far we can actually push this today. Most of the reviewers who were doing overclocking guides and whatnot were not able to achieve anything faster than about 3.9. That's one of the reasons why I held off doing my overclocking video as I felt it was a little bit premature to do it out of the gate, especially on a brand new architecture like this. So let's see if there's any improvements. Look at that voltage though, man. That's, that's a lot of volts right there. I mean, I know it can handle it. And I believe uh, 1.375 is what AMD said. Don't go higher than when you're doing manual clocking. Something else I want to mention here, because there were a lot of comments in there as well when I did my comparison between the 5960X and the 1800X in rendering, all DDR4 runs 2133 megahertz out of the box unless you overclock the memory. The speed that you actually see printed on the module is the XMP profile, which is a memory overclock. The base RAM speed on all DDR4 is 2133. Something else I wanna mention is people were saying that the 3000 megahertz RAM on the test bench over there on Intel was a, was a clear indication that I was trying to stack it. Um, guys, this LPX is also 3000 megahertz, but it didn't matter. They were both running 2667. Yeah, what does that, what does that say? What does that say, fellas? What does that say 3000, right? It says 3000? 3000? What, what's that one say? Does that one say 3000? I can't, I can't tell, I don't have my glasses. So now that we put all that crap to bed, let's go ahead and start playing around with this. There's actually a few overclocking profiles already included with the Crosshair motherboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the four gigahertz OC profile and kind of start from there. And I wanna see what it changed here. So I put the memory to 2400 megahertz. Um, I put the multiplier to 40. Our B clock stays at 100. The divider stays the same. Custom CPU core ratio says auto. Um, but anyway, it put it to 40 there. So let's go ahead and change the memory frequency as well to 2933. Let's just see if we can even boot that. Voltage, I don't like the high voltage number, so I'm gonna change that myself. And I'm gonna try something lower, like a 1.375, and I'm gonna see if it even works. Okay, we're looking for the green light. Ah, we got a green light, so therefore that means we're gonna boat, we're gonna boot. Let's wait for it, there it is. I mean, the fact that I'm even posting is a big deal because I couldn't even get that far. I would just get a nine, an error code nine on the motherboard before if I tried to go anywhere over, like I said, that 2666 with a four gigs uh, CPU. So the fact that we're in Windows now is already an improvement. That's pretty cool. All right, we're looking for a couple of things here. One, uh, our idle temps, as you can see, have already jumped up to, well, it's in the mid to upper 50s. I saw a 61 there, but we are running four gigs. And just, it didn't save our stock result though. What was it, a 15, 17? I believe that's what it was. All right, let's go ahead and run the CPU and see if we even start. Do we crash? Do we finish? Temps have already gone up to 75, 76. We're staying at four gigs. It's not throttling at all, 100% utilization. And our score went up to a 17, 17. That was quick and easy by just clicking a couple buttons. You can also hit like if you know the, the struggles of just making sure you don't miss the post, you know, to get into the BIOS. Because then you gotta wait for Windows to boot and start all over. You just gotta mash it. Mash, 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 mash. Some like to hold it. I like to finger it. So our core voltage did stay under 1.4. It's funny though, because I put 1.375 and you can see it went up to 1.395. I just don't like that it does a different value than I tell it. What's the point of manual mode if it does what it wants to do anyway. Now the cool thing about the four gigs though is all we did was load the preset, reduce the voltage a little bit and bump up the memory to 2933. Now I don't wanna go any faster on the memory just yet. My next jump is 3200. I wanna see if we can get 4.1 out of this. If there's the green, wow, are we actually gonna boot 4.1? I've never got, holy hell. The thing I find kind of surprising about all of this though is we're still sitting on much less voltage than it was actually giving stock. At stock, I was seeing it go as high as like 1.48 stock. Let's see if it starts the Cinebench test, let's alone completes it. So there we are, 4.1. Temps are the same because we haven't really changed the voltage at all. Loud truck driving by and let's start it. Ah, I was afraid of that. Ryzen has probably one of the most dramatic crashes when it comes to overclocking. Like Intel will kind of blue screen or it will just hard stop or hard lock. A AMD just like pfft, black screen. And you're just kind of left going, mm, 
What happened? Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is instead of pulling the, the megahertz back, I'm going to try and bump up the voltage a little bit. Well, this is, a, this is actually nice to see. It detects that the overclock failed and it wants me to run the setup. On the previous BIOS, it never did that, ever. That was kind of neat. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the voltage mode on manual. I wanna see where it tries to bring this puppy. Oh my God, I'm getting too old to spin. Does spinning the other way clear a bad spin going one way? Nope, it just makes it worse. We are at 4.1, so I have no idea what the volts are gonna be. I expect this temperature to jump up quite a bit. So let's see if we get the same crash here at 4.1. Oh, yep, there it goes. Damn you, Ryzen! Huh, check this out. Even though I left it at auto, it didn't give us any more volts than we had when we had it manually set. So let's go ahead and manually set that to like 1.45. What the hell, why not? I mean, if I blow it up, that's really gonna suck. I don't think it's gonna blow up. I mean, it would suck to replace the CPU. I'm gonna say the new voltage took effect because we've gone up significantly on our idle temps. It went all the way up as high as like 63 a second ago. All right, come on, baby. Just make it through one. Just make it through one test. Come on, baby, come on, baby. We're not throttling, we're still at 4.1. 83.75C, very hot, but, ah, look at that, 1755. I don't think 1800 is gonna happen. I wonder if I can push more memory now. Before I rebooted, I did one more test and it did actually complete uh, 84.5C on the, on the socket. That is, that is a lot. Before I increase the memory, I'm gonna leave the voltage where it's at. I'm gonna try 4.2. And unfortunately, 4.2 is not making it to the desktop. So back down to 4.1 we go. I'm not upping that voltage anymore, hell no. Okay, so I'm gonna go 3200 memory and I reduced the multiplier to 41. Let's see if that will even post. Oh, oh, 3200 megahertz RAM has just booted. Show me what you got. Okay, it's running. Temps are as expected up in the 80s, 83. It's gonna probably hit 84 because I am still running that massive amount of uh, V-Core. Stuck at 84.25, 84.5. Oh, wow, look at that. It came down. I came all the way down to 1685 by speeding up the memory. Let's run this again to see what happens. I'm not seeing any sort of fluctuation here. Okay. It does feel like it's going slower, though. That's crazy. What do we got? 1691. That's crazy. So it's still at 4.1, it's not throttling. So interestingly enough, it never throttled, yet we lost approximately 50 points, well, a little bit over 50 points, uh, by simply bumping up the memory. So I guess the next thing to do is put the memory back down to like the 2933 or whatever it was and see if that score comes back up. That's crazy. So I have a feeling this score is gonna be significantly higher. We, we're not throttling, we're set at 4.1. Temperature is at 84.5. If we go any higher, it'll probably start to throttle. So I'm gonna pull the voltage back next, but yeah, it's okay, so it's about to finish. I'm expecting over 1700 on this one. Yeah, 1738. So I slowed the memory down and got a faster result, a better result. Now in order to verify these weird results, I've got to go back to 3200 and see if it slows down again. And 3200, check. Okay, one last time at 3200 and there we go. Nothing's throttling, we're good. Let's see what the next score is. 1752, so that time it went up. Ugh. When you get strange results, it's important to double check and redo your test because obviously something went weird with that last boot where now I did see a little bit of a jump in speed at 1752. Now I know 4.2 is not gonna boot and uh, I don't, I can't even go any faster on the memory without playing with the B clock settings. And I'm not gonna do that today. I think this video has already been long enough, but 4.1 at 1752, is pretty impressive. My whole mission here today was to see if there was any sort of improvements when it came to overclocking on Ryzen in the last three weeks, especially considering I had some pretty lackluster results initially. But the recent updates to the microcode for Ryzen's processors and the latest BIOS, especially on the Crosshair, uh, is giving better results than I was getting even three weeks ago. So that's a good thing. If we're seeing improvements like this already in just three weeks, I can't wait to see where we are in three months and potentially next year. Um, also too, this particular BIOS that I'm using isn't quite out yet. It should be out maybe next week, uh, but it does. It has very, very minor differences between 
the, uh, what is it, 904 that's already out. Uh, but you guys can look for this BIOS here coming out very soon if you're running on a crosshair board. But go ahead and run the, the latest official BIOS on the website and you'll get similar results to this. So what I gotta do now is I gotta fine tune this voltage. The voltage is way too high. 85C on water, way too hot. So I'm gonna pull the voltages back. I'll probably have to go back down to 4.0 and that's fine with me. That's more than, more than enough. 100 megahertz isn't gonna make or break how fast things run, but uh, it could also decrease the stability when I bring down the voltage and that's not okay. Also, make sure you guys stay tuned next week. We're gonna have some fun here because what's more fun than playing around with a GTX 1080 Ti? Playing around with two of them. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next video.